We're going to list out our five components of the internal controls and then we'll list out principles related to them. Those five components being the control environment, risk assessment, control activities, information and communication, and monitoring activities. We're going to start off with the control environment, listing the principles related to control environment. First principle, business shows a commitment to integrity and ethical value. So we're looking at this in terms of the controls of the organization, in terms of the organization as a whole, that the business shows a commitment to integrity and ethical values. Note, these things aren't always the easiest things for us to write down and communicate, but you can think about how can we get a feel for that? We're gonna be, of course, talking to people, inquiring about it, and writing down our impressions of the control environment in terms of business shows commitment to integrity and ethical value principle number two board of directors shows independence from management and exercises oversight of the development and performance of internal control you'll recall that the board of directors are represented and voted on by the owners the shareholders so therefore they should be able to provide some oversight over management which in essence are the people that they hire in order to act as agents of the shareholders so the board of directors should show independence from management. The more independence from management then, the more you would think the board of directors would have good oversight over management. Whereas if there's less independence from management, it would be a, a more difficult situation. You would think the oversight wouldn't be as good over the performance of uh, the management. Third principle, management sets up with uh, board oversight structures reporting lines and authorities and responsibilities in the pursuit of objectives so we have the setup and the board of directors being involved in this with the structure the reporting lines we have the business hierarchy the reporting lines within it and authorities and responsibilities in the pursuit of the objectives what are the authorities and responsibilities this is going to be really important because of course people need to understand their specific uh, roles and responsibilities. It seems like a basic thing, but oftentimes people don't have a good idea of what their responsibilities are. Things fall down uh, you know, in the middle between the responsibilities of two individuals possibly, and we don't know exactly who to hold accountable because it was never well defined in the first place. Principle four, business shows a commitment to attract, develop, and retain competent employees in alignment with objectives. So we're looking at the types of employees that are being brought into the organization and we might also consider the overturn of employees are, are they bringing up the employees that seem to be performing well the best top performance of the employee of the organization are they basically retaining employees that are are well performing employees is there a high turnover uh, of employees of uh, employees and what's going to be basically the feeling of employees which can be indicated in whether there's a high turnover or not, or whether they're basically able to develop employees within the organization. Number five, business holds individuals accountable for their internal control responsibilities in the pursuit of objectives. This of course lines out with first determining what the responsibilities are for different individuals, and then determining whether or not uh, the individuals have uh, followed through with their responsibilities and the people that aren't following through we know who to hold accountable and we want to be able to see that the people responsible for for certain conditions or for certain objectives are the ones being held accountable if those objectives are not met next we'll take a look at risk uh, risk assessment principles or principles related to risk assessment principle number one business specifies objectives with enough clarity to enable the identification and assessment of risks related to objectives. So when we're thinking about the risks, we need to know exactly what the objectives are so that that's gonna help us to identify what the risks are. We need to be clear about that. And the more clear we are about that, the more clearly we can basically assess what those risks are and take action with regards to them. Principle number two, business identifies risks to the achievement of its objectives across the entity and analyzes risks as a basis for determining how the risks are to be managed. Once we understand what the risks are, we want to see them across the organization, and then we can come up with a plan, of course, to see how we want to deal with those risks. How can we mitigate those risks? Uh, principle three, business considers the potential for fraud in assessing risks to the achievement of objectives. So we want to consider fraud, and we'll talk a little bit more about the fraud factors that uh, can be put together or what's going to increase the likelihood of fraud we want to basically set up an environment within the organization to lessen the likelihood of fraud as part of the components of our internal control. So first we have to say, 
what are the risks of fraud. Some of those risks are going to be things that uh, we can apply to any type of organization. Some might be specific to the type of organization that we are in. We want to see where the, the fraud risks 